help them. And so in order to lay the foundation for the future, prayer is necessary. And so what is the intention? You see, the hypocrite receives the reward immediately because their desire is to be seen of man. But when you begin to pray, your intention to, should not necessarily be to anything that is time bound or earthly bound. It should be to whatsoever the will of God is. And sometimes the will of God, you won't come into the knowledge and revelation of it immediately. It may take a year of prayer. It may take two years, three years, four years. You may say, God, why do you have me fasting like this why do you have me praying like this why do you have me on such a strict level of of consecration and, and and seclusion it seems as though i can't do what everybody else does you don't know that it's not for now the hypocrite wants it now but it's for the future it's for the future it's for the future praying to be seen to give off an impression and so if you pray, if people know you to pray a lot, you have to pray even more. Yes. If people consider you a praying person, you have to be someone that prays even more. The truth of the matter is there are many churches that are struggling with attacks. They're attacked by princes and principalities. They're attacked by all matters of things in the territory. Why? Because their intercessory team only prays when they gather. They only, they only pray when they gather. And it's funny because sometimes when you see them gather, they'll be so bold. <laughs> they'll pray the boldest prayer, the most audacious prayers. And you're like, my God, this person may, must have some deep history with God. You don't know that that's the first time they, they probably prayed all week. And so they come and you want to pray that type of prayer in a service. Of course, the enemy is going to attack you because he wants to see if you have depth. If, if, it's, if, if, if you're deep enough, if you've been rooted enough, if you've built something substantial. And so the Lord must begin to deal with your intentions. First things that hinders prayers. The second thing is character. Let's go to 1 Peter 3 and 7. We're going to use this just as an example. 1 Peter 3 and 7. Bible says this, likewise ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and being and as beings heir and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. Character. You see, there are certain prayers, as I said before you can pray all you want to but unless your character is aligned with the instructions of the word of God, it doesn't matter. The Bible gives an instruction to the husbands here. And he says that there's a, there's a requirement. The word has given a prescription when it comes to how to treat your spouse. And if you don't meet that need... Or if you don't live that lifestyle, if you don't treat them according to what the Lord has instructed, then the, the response is what? The hindrance of your prayers. I told you guys about the lady who I was praying, we were praying for, and she said that she needed help married. You know what I told the apostle? I said, okay, your husband isn't coming to church. He's, oh, maybe he's bitter, something happened. He doesn't want anything to do with the church anymore. I said, before you go to church on Sundays, I want you to cook him a meal. Don't leave the house and bang the door when you leave. Don't leave the house with, with a frown on your face. When you leave, cook him a meal. Say, husband, I'm going to church. I prepared something for you. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, if peradventure you made the mistake to marry a man that is unsaved, what did the scripture say will convert that man? It didn't say your prayers. It said your character. And so you, you may have many women that are praying for their husbands, yet the way they treat them in the home is atrocious. And so how is God going to answer your prayer? You become a hindrance to yourself. How can you be a man of God and yet you dis, dishonor, you don't consider your spouse, your prayers aren't going to be answered. And so the Lord began, that's why when we pray, we shouldn't be too fixed on what we think we want. 
when we begin to pray, we, we must first pray and say, Lord, nevertheless, not my will. Because in order, because sometimes in order for us to get to my will, there has to be a lot of work done in me. And so let thy will be done. And the truth of the matter is, if I continue with the Lord, there will come a time where my will and his will begin to merge. But some people, they want their will at any expense. And so they're trying to hold God hostage in prayer. And they'll come afterwards and say, Prophet, I've been praying for this same thing for 10 years, for 15 years. Nothing has changed because you haven't really been praying. Because when you begin to pray, the first thing that changes is you. Is you. And so your character can be a hindrance to your prayer life. It could be a hindrance if you don't treat others according to what the Lord has instructed. I love how Apostle said, every person is valuable. If you don't treat your neighbor with respect, with honor, the Bible says that those, the elders that, that labor in the work, they're, they're, they're worthy of double honor. There's an instruction of how to treat certain individuals. How can your prayers be answered if you treat people like they're worthless? Yeah. It won't be. If you treat them like you don't care about them. You, you, you can't be praying for a husband and, and you think every man on the streets is nothing. Yeah. You, you need to go to God to heal you from that bitterness first. Yes. You're on the message boards online talking bashing men and then you come to church talking about Lord I need a husband that's not how it works same for the men online watching all type of nonsense that degrades women and then you want to come and talk about I, 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 I want to be married to a woman of God God isn't going to take you seriously and so your character is essential the way you live is important because you know the truth the truth is this sometimes you can ask for a thing and it be answered when you're living a life that is not contrary to the word but that answer didn't come from God be careful if it seems as though everything you're asking for is answered and the way you're living gets further and further away from God that means that it may be the devil that's answering those prayer requests of yours because he wants you to remain comfortable in your state he wants you to feel as if the answer to those prayers are a validation to your spirituality. A validation of your spirituality. That the answer to those prayers are the validation of your spirituality even though you're getting further and further away from God. You can't come and say, I want to be a prayer warrior and you're living a life of sexual immorality. And sometimes in the church, those are the people that pray the hardest. They, they pray the most and yet there's filth all over them and, and, and people will be moved when they're praying but the truth of the matter is that the, is, is, is the operations of the devil let's be honest, it could be the enemy in operation because Paul said, lest after I, I preach to others, how can I become a castaway yes. he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity and so how you live is essential because when God, when two people are praying, two people can pray the same prayer, but they'll get a different response. Because God is looking at the man that's praying more than the words that are proceeding from his mouth. And so if one individual has been consistent, consistent in prayer, consistent in purity, consistent in obedience, consistent in submission to God, consistent in the right character, then they're going to get a better result than the individual that isn't. That individual that isn't, they may need to fast long, they may even need to fast longer because the Lord has to deal with so much nonsense and filth that needs to be broken out first. I was in Nigeria I think that was last year or the year before the year before last and there was an evangelist who came to preach old man I forgot his name but he came to preach and man he, st he stood up and he prayed a prayer for like five minutes not even that long let me say 30 seconds and after he prayed that prayer he said okay if you're healed come out 
I kid you not, Apostle, 300 people came out. I said, how can someone pray a prayer for 30 seconds and 300 people healed instantly? Because the truth of the matter is, I was just looking at the 30 seconds. But the Lord was looking at the 30 years of purity. The 20 years of submission, of obedience. Even in the moment that it was uncomfortable, he may have had moments that everyone forsook him. And he said, no, I will abide. I will remain. That it doesn't matter. I belong to the Lord. He chose to win by righteousness. When, other may, when others may have decided to get it the, the quick way and to compromise their faith, he abided and he remained. And so that's what the Lord looks at. Yes. That's what the Lord looks at. What have you built? What is your history with the Lord? What is your history with the Lord? That's the question you have to ask yourself this night. Because prayer is not just the words that proceed from your mouth is an essence that exudes from your presence. It exudes from your being. It's an essence. It's not just a word. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh my God. Welcome each and every one of you. I'm excited to have you on this night. This is our weekly midnight cry. As you know, do me a favor as you get on. Let me know if you hear me, if you see me, if everything is working as it should. Also, let me know where you're tuning in from. Um, if you're in the United States, let me know your state. If you're outside of the U.S., let me know the nation that we are privileged to have you listening in from. I believe tonight is going to be great. And the reason that I believe tonight is going to be great, because I'm believing the Lord. And I'm believing for testimonies. Those of you that have felt as if, your life has been delayed. You're not where you should be. You know that you should be further in one area of life or another. We're going to deal with things that bring hindrance and limitation to the path that the Lord has set for you. And we are going to contend for your freedom this very evening in the name of Jesus. So welcome, welcome. Jamaica's in the house. Nigeria, Texas, Jamaica, Pennsylvania. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have Georgia, Trinidad, California. You can hear me, that's good. The United Kingdom, that's awesome. That is awesome. We thank you, Lord God. We're dealing with this. Let's go to the book of George, chapter 2 and 25. The Bible says, And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. There are creatures that their responsibility is the consumption of years. The consumption of the years of an individual's life. That when you see them, you see their gifting. You see their potential. Someone looks at you. Uh, they see so much greatness on the inside of you. But it's been three years. They've been seeing that same greatness and no manifestation. Uh, they say, they look at you and they say, sister, any man would be lucky to marry you. Yet, there is no man. Uh, they say, brother, any woman would be lucky to have you as a husband. Yet, there is no wife. Uh, they say, they look at you. They say, they look at the wisdom that God has given you. Look at the insight and the revelation that God has given you. Yet you're living in lack. Yet you're living in poverty. It's as it's a manifestation of these creatures that come to consume time. Their agenda and their assignment is to make it seem as if you're behind. It's to bring you to a place where your potential doesn't match with your output, doesn't match with your productivity, doesn't match with your manifestation, doesn't match with where you are in life, where all of a sudden you begin to feel like a big person in a little body. They come to consume time. It said what? Uh, the locust. The canker worm. And if you read George chapter 1, uh, it says uh, that 
it, it, it begins to list them in order that the things that the locusts don't eat or have left behind, the canker worm eats. And the things that the canker worm leaves behind, the caterpillars, and then the palmer worm, etc. There are certain things that have been assigned to make sure you don't reach your potential. Oh, yes. So we have to pray. And the reason we're praying is twofold that whatsoever it is would be taken away that God would have mercy upon you and your household and not only would God have mercy upon you break every generational curse but then there would be a display of his power in your life that will cause a restoration and a redemption of the time for your sake that is what we're praying some of you are look sometimes uh, people message me i'm seeing in the spirit there are some of you you've been to school uh, you have a, a bachelor's uh, you have a master's uh, you're even tempted uh, to go and get a phd why because uh, even though you have all these qualifications uh, qualifications uh, qualifications yet there's nothing to show for it uh, some of you you have all the connections uh, you've, you've 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 networked uh, you've made friends and alliances and allegiances yet uh, there is nothing to show for it you're struggling while everyone you're connected to is rising you see yourself going down uh, it's a manifestation of these creatures uh, many things uh, there are some pastors and preachers uh, they're connected to all the right people and everyone else's ministry goes up yet their own goes down uh, yet it seems as though they're not a part of the fold why it could be something that was sent. Sent in order to stop your rising. Sent in order to stop your lifting. Sent so that when you go to the grave, you'll go to the grave with everything that God has placed in you. But we declare that that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare now that that will not be your portion. In the name of Jesus, come on, someone declare, someone type, say, it's not my portion. It's not my, it's not my portion. I say in the name of Jesus, you will fulfill your assignment upon the face of the earth. Where you need to be in life, you'll be there. There are some individuals, you've been working in the same job for years, the same position for years, and yet there's no honor to your name. They don't respect you in the office. They don't take you seriously. You're passed up for promotion. You know you have the, the wisdom, the insight, the experience it takes uh, to be at a higher position yet uh, those that come after you they raise them up uh, and you're wondering what the situation is uh, it's a palmer worm uh, it's a canker worm uh, it's a caterpillar oh my god uh, it's a locust uh, things that have been sent uh, to consume the years god said i will restore to you the years the years I remember when I joined the church a few years ago uh, there was a young lady uh, she used to sing and while I was praying uh, the Lord spoke to me and he said by this time that woman should have had two children that she should have had two children by now and all of a sudden eventually I held it to myself uh, but I found myself praying for her and in a span of about two years uh, now she has two children Two children. Oh my God. Why? Because even certain things, uh, there are certain things that God has outlined and designed for your life uh, that when you get to this age, uh, that when you get to this many years in your marriage, this is what's supposed to happen. That when you get to this many years in your profession, this is what's supposed to happen. God has set a path. Uh, he has ordained the days of your life. Uh, but sometimes, uh, sometimes it's us. We can make mistakes. Uh, we can do 
things that will cause the hand of God to be upon us. And so in that situation, we have to cry for mercy. We have to say, oh God, have mercy. Let the accusations of the enemy no longer cause the years of my life to be consumed. But sometimes it's the work of generational curses where you see a nation split. The Bible talks about the, the evil that was done in the days of Solomon that caused the nation of Israel to split in the reign of his sons. Why? As a result of his own evil. And so sometimes it's a generational curse. Sometimes it's a generational pattern. Sometimes it's something that's been established. And so we have to pray and say, Lord God, have mercy on the inhabitants of my blood and liberate me and my posterity. We're going to pray this night. Oh my God, uh, how many of you are ready to pray? If you haven't shared this, share it. We're getting ready to get into the place of prayer. I'm believing that the Lord would restore, redeem the time for your sake. Uh, that he would cause the years uh, which were stolen uh, to be restored. Uh, the years which were stolen uh, to be restored. Uh, the years, Satoife, Sarokitome, and Salaife di Zalento perakoske, valance niantoskebe, and folinanskeba, zarokito ivele. The years which were stolen, they have to be restored. Oh, yes, Jesus. I, I'm, I'm praying because in the realm of the spirit, I'm looking at an individual. You're skilled, but you're in your profession, you need people to reach out to you to book. I don't know if it's consultation based, but it seems as though your business has been struggling. It's been struggling. You've been doing this thing for years. You're skilled at it, yet there's nothing to show for it. People will come and you'll do a good job. People will come and sometimes you'll even bless them uh, and uh, they don't show back they don't come back for one reason or the other Zatope, i'm praying uh, that that cycle would be broken off of you and the works of your hand in the name of jesus now the bible says this uh, he says and i will restore so who does the restoration it's the lord the to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And so there are certain things that can cause the years of an individual to be cut. Oh, to be consumed. When they step out of alignment, out of God's alignment, there are some of you, the, the, the day you got into that relationship, you stepped out of alignment, and every year you spent in that relationship, that was five years out of alignment. And so you may, it may have just seemed as if you were, you were in that relationship for three years, not knowing that's 50 years outside of the will of God. You lost valuable time because you were not in a place that God wanted you to be. Some of you in the wrong, you were in the wrong ministries. Some of you under the wrong coverings. Some of you with the wrong connections. Some of you going out before your time uh, or staying in uh, after your time why and as a result of this it was the lord that permitted he permitted the the locust he permitted the canker worm he permitted the caterpillar he come he permitted the palmer worm to consume the years you lost years and so where you should have been now it may take if not for god's mercy it may take you another five years to get there it may take you another 10 years to get there why because you were disobedient to the voice of god if that's you uh, i want everyone here to begin to pray uh, and say lord have mercy pray that prayer say god have mercy have mercy upon my soul have mercy upon me for my for, for acts of disobedience have mercy upon me for acts of disobedience oh some of you are they've consumed your years because of your character because of pride because of jealousy because of envy because of lust because of things that that you did not you choose not 
not to let go of. You choose not to let go and so the enemy uses it to imprison you and to consume the years of your life to stop you from moving forward. You have to pray. You have to pray this night and say, God, anything I'm doing, anything I'm engaged in, any way I'm presenting myself that's delaying my own life, that's causing me to, 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 to hinder your operations in my life, that's caused me to be out of alignment, forgive me, have mercy upon me and reveal it to me so that I can correct myself, so that I can get realigned with you, so that I can hear your voice and abide to your precepts. Precepts, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God Almighty, I pray this night and I ask of you to indeed have mercy on us. Have mercy upon your sons and daughters this night. Have mercy upon those that are listening, upon those that are watching, upon those that are praying. Have mercy. So many of them have found themselves in self-destructive positions, not even knowing that that is how the enemy was setting them up. They found themselves in relationships that the enemy would use as an as an excuse or as an excuse to, to consume their years they found themselves in connections in ministries in friendships that the enemy would use as an excuse to consume their years they found themselves even working in certain jobs yes working in certain jobs being employed to certain people being in certain in the certain places, certain schools that you told them not to go to, you told them not to get hired, but they were just they were just looking for an easy way out, and unknowingly they delayed their own life I ask of you, oh spirit of God, oh father in heaven I ask of you to have mercy upon them, in the name of your son Jesus and spirit of the living God I ask of you to begin to bring these things to their memory, that they would adequately repent if per adventure they still find themselves in these things which are contrary to your will which are contrary to your desire for them which caused them to step out of alignment reveal it to them so that they can turn around reveal it to them so that they can walk away reveal it to them so that they can repent and make a change this very evening in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth oh yes uh, come on keep praying uh, some of you uh, you're gonna be led to repent uh, for your character for pride uh, for the way you speak uh, some of you for the way you present yourself uh, the way you dress uh, the way you talk to certain individuals uh, some of you whatever it is the Spirit of God uh, brings to your mind uh, just begin to repent for it uh, just begin to repent for it because we can't just go and begin to bombard the gates of hell if there are things inside of you that need to come under alignment that need to come into alignment so spirit of god i ask you to go into the depths of the heart of these individuals go to the depths of their heart and begin to soften their hearts that they would heed to the counsel that they would heed to your voice that they would heed to your counsel you said let he that has an ear hear what the spirit of the lord is saying i ask ask of you to give them spiritual ears uh, this very evening uh, let them be discerning uh, let them be spiritually sensitive uh, let them be able to hear your voice uh, and begin to articulate your promptings in their inner man uh, from this night moving forward uh, let their ears not be closed uh, let their heart not be hardened uh, let their mind uh, not be set on a specific way uh, but instead uh, let them submit their will to you uh, that their decree would be the same cry that Jesus had in the garden where he said, Lord, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Have mercy, O God. Zalevale eskapai peronika, men sovelenskafe. 
Ele viper, come on, keep praying. Keep calling out for mercy. Keep calling out for mercy. We're not dealing with the generational curses yet. We're not dealing with the curses from the enemy. Yet. We're dealing with things that you need to repent for, things that you need to talk to God concerning it, even if you don't feel as if there's anything. If your life is not going the way it should, then there's something there. There's something there. I pray for you that God would give you grace to humble yourself under his mighty arm. Oh yes, Lord, uh, work in their hearts, uh, work in their hearts, uh, reveal to us, O oh, Spirit of the living God, uh, we say uh, this night, uh, we don't want to be against you, uh, we don't want to fight against you, uh, we don't want to kick against the pricks, uh, we don't want to be a hindrance and a resistance uh, to what you want to do in and through us, uh, we don't want to be your adversary, we don't want to fight you, uh, we want to be in a alignment. We want to be led by you. We want to be instructed by you. We want to be guided by you. We want to be hearers of your voice. Oh, Malan Savaike, we want to be those that submit ourselves to your counsel and do your commandments. And so this night, I rebuke every spirit of rebellion. The Lord told me to pray against that spirit. Some of you, you rebel against God, not even by your own will, but as a result of a spirit that dwells inside of you. So now in the name of Jesus, I speak specifically, not to you, but every spirit of rebellion, every spirit of rebellion, I command it to come out of you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God. I speak to rebellion. I speak to stubbornness. I speak to anti-submissiveness. Every self-will, every selfishness, every self-delusion, self-seduction, pride, every unteachable spirit. I command it to come out of you now. Every demon that'll make you feel as if you know everything and you don't need to change. That'll make you feel as if uh, you're good where you are and you don't need to make adjustments. Uh, I address that devil directly and specifically and I command its holds uh, to, to, to be broken off of you now in the name of Jesus Christ. I said loose these people and let them go. Uh, every spirit uh, that is unteachable, every spirit of defiance, uh, of disobedience, uh, every spirit uh, I command it to go. Uh, I command it to go. Uh, I command it to go. Rejection that has opened the door for rebellion. I command you now, uproot yourself. Come out. Come out. Get out of them. Get out of their body. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes, le valoskebe vaiperananska le donske vaibe. Oh yes, some of you living in rebellion against God as a result of, of a desire to remain strong. I speak right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that is associated with the self-life, I command it to come out of you. I command it to come out of you. Every spirit of self self-righteousness, self-exaltation, self-promotion, self-will, self-indulgence, self-gratification, self-rule that'll make you a ruler over yourself instead of yielding that seat of rulership to the Holy Ghost. Every spirit of self-rule, I call it up and I command it to come out of you now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth 
the son of the living God. Come out now. Come out. Every spirit of self-denial that will make you not even be able to look at yourself in the mirror and see the things that the Lord wants you to deal with. I command that spirit of self-denial and self-delusion to come out of you now. Some of you, it's coming out of your belly. I see some individuals beginning to cough up and to throw up. I command these spirits to loose you now. Rebellion, stubbornness, disobedience, every egotism, every egotistical spirit. I cast it out of you. Come on, narcissism. I cast it out of you. These are things that cause you to live a life in circles, unable to move forward because there's too much filth in your character. Be free now. Be free now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Men suffer. And Lord God, even as you begin to deliver your people, I pray right now, in peradventure, there are those on here that are struggling as a result of curses, as a result of things that were done by their ancestors. I stand in my office this night and I pray for the remission of sins. I command sins to be remitted. The sins of their forefathers, the sins of their ancestors, the sins that were committed even unknowingly. We plead, I plead and I declare the supremacy of the blood of Jesus, that blood of Jesus that speaks even through time, that blood of Jesus, let it speak on their behalf this very night in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And now I address every spirit that has been sent into their existence to consume their years. I speak uh, to the locust. Uh, I speak uh, to the canker worm. Uh, I speak uh, to the caterpillar. I speak uh, to the palmer worm. Uh, I speak to you creatures. Uh, I speak to you beings. Uh, and I command you uh, to loose uh, their lives and their years uh, from the clenches of your jaws. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, la mai petosketi. And so my felento. Oh yes, uh, any way, uh, any years that you've consumed, uh, I command you to throw it up now in the name of Jesus. Uh, every years, uh, years that have been stolen, uh, years that have been consumed, uh, years that have been taken away, uh, years that have been lost, uh, years uh, that would have caused them to be much further in life, uh, I command it to be restored. Uh, years uh, that would have caused them to be married by now, I command it to be restored. Years that would have caused them to have children by now, I command those years to be restored. Years that would have caused their ministries to be much further along than, they, than it is now, I command those years to be restored. Years that would have caused them to be at a greater level in their professional life, in their entrepreneurial endeavors, in the work of their hands I speak to those years wherever it's been consumed and wherever it's been hidden I call them forth and I command you to come back let there be redemption and a restoration of time on your behalf now let there be a redemption and a restoration of time for you now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I command a restoration of years, a restoration of years. Years. Even the years that you disassociated in, you look back the past three years, you can't even remember anything significant. You can't even remember anything great that has taken place. You can't even really remember it. It's a blur. Years that were stolen, stolen by depression, stolen by sadness, stolen by loneliness, stolen by forgiveness. 
frustrations. I command the years that heaviness tore away from you to be restored. I command the years that depression stole away from you to be restored. I command the years that destruction and every self-sabotaging devil stole from you to be restored. I command the restoration of those years. The restoration of those years. The restoration of those years. And not only are those years to be restored, but the fruits that your life would have borne by now, I command it to spring forth. 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 Men Shabbat Roske Baipeli. Valenza Vaime Roboske Dina Kai Beliva Lendo Mele Vaibe Renonskebe Mento Leshkava Rebaiske Baibe Come on, declare someone and say, I will be fruitful. Type it in the chat and just pray that prayer for just a little bit. Declare it. Say, I will be fruitful. I'm declaring this year that you will be fruitful. And the Lord just told me that as there is a restoration of years just getting ready to be a, a supernatural release of divine acceleration on your behalf oh you're gonna say God why are things moving so quickly for me it's not the things are moving quickly it's that you're receiving a restitution it's that you're receiving a restoration I declare divine acceleration divine acceleration divine acceleration varonis and I prophesy that upon your life I declare that you will not be behind any longer you will not be the tail you will be the head you will not be beneath you will be above you will be the head and not the tail. You will be above and not beneath. I declare divine acceleration. The things that you've been waiting for, let it come to you speedily. The things that you've been believing for, let them come to you expeditiously. The things that you've been praying for, may the Lord make a way on your behalf. I declare oh, upon I pray for you concerning your prayer points, concerning your causes of concerns I declare that indeed the Lord shall meet your point of need the Lord shall meet your point of need and not only shall he meet your point of need but it will be done in a way that you will know it's him and I declare you will rise you will rise the Lord is telling me I'm praying for you because he's telling me to prophesy this upon your life uh, that you'll go from step one to four. You're going you're gonna to skip steps. Uh, it's going to seem uh, to those looking from the outside, uh, they're going to say, how can you be here one day uh, and the next day you're somewhere else? Uh, how can you be down here one day and the next day you're up? Uh, how can you be so behind in life uh, and all of a sudden you're ahead of all of us? Oh my God, it's the work of the Lord. It's divine acceleration. It's supernatural promotion. You will leap over wall. You will run through the troops and leap over walls. I prophesy that upon you now. You will run through the troops and leap over walls. Where people see you today, they won't see you there any longer because the Lord will take you further. The Lord will take you higher. The Lord will bless you indeed. The Lord will bless you indeed. I wage a war this night. Come on. I need you to just pray with me in tongues with, with, with some intensity for just a few seconds. Unless you're manifesting that's all Okay, receive your deliverance, but if not, just pray in tongues for just a little bit. Oh, my Lavante, we're breaking through something right now. 
Zaifa to kobe, la kaipa rone kaipa li, zanto pelai, mesko belevana antoske, ebam beleva, le kaipa rananske baibe, mensa falai, e kapa la vananto, zaike barananske be, le kobe levana, zaipa rananto kobe, niento kapana, levam beleskaba, rakai pelevante, niense palakobe leva, le baimpe rakaiska, lavante, zo pelevana maradoske, Men se falai e kai parodis kapa le kuma levanto zai ke para kai beleva men se fala men se fala e pai ke bala varananske le kai paronoske ba niento va le ko beleva zai parakoske be men so fala men so fala come on just pray just a little more rebai ke be men se fai e kai be i kai ba bembeva bembeva hai parokoske be men se falante Zaike balantope roskepa le kaipe reva e pambele kaipe zaima rakoskepe. Oh yes, le pambele radoe ke balante ka menso belevante ke bele robonse vaike le pambe faipe de kaipe robonse ke Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, war on their behalf. Fight for them. Fight for them. Zainu kaipe li iskapa le bambe rakoske baibe le bambe le vaipe rakoske be manso le vana antoske dine le kaibe nae le vaimbe rakaiske come on le vaipe raduske mensava there is a restoration but before we pray that I want to pray this very evening and I'm declaring this thing as we begin to pray the Lord began to show me a fig tree and I'm reminded of the scripture. Oh yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. Sabaika e kaibe, valoske ba, ento meravaike be, zaibe. The Lord told me to pray anything that has been planted in your life uh, that is not bearing fruit, uh, that is not bearing fruit uh, according to the time and season uh, that it's supposed to bear, I command it to wither away and die. There are some fig trees uh, that may be planted in your life uh, that is absorbing uh, the nutrients that is eating away at you, yet uh, there's no fruit. Uh, some relationships, uh, some friendships uh, eating away at you. you Yet, uh, no fruit. Uh, some of you at, uh, uh, at jobs, uh, at businesses, uh, eating away at you, uh, at your time, at your energy, uh, at your youth. Yet, uh, no fruit. Uh, every fig tree uh, that is not bearing uh, fruit uh, according to its time and season, I command it to wither. I command it to wither away and die this very night. Uh, this very night, uh, we command it to wither. I say wither away. I say wither away. La toske doike yanteva zaike bente yanto mele vaipe zaike berananske la bambe vaika aike be mento mera vaike la bambe ske baibe bambe radaiske bele yando mele kaibe zaike berananse baibe ha bambe le kaibe nende berananske be zaike ba roboske baibe ne kaibe yam Tefa rabaiske baisefa leko belevaibe mansa. I command everything that has been that has been taken away from you, that has been consuming from your life, that has been eating away at your health, eating away at your resources, eating away at your energy, eating away your vision, eating away your drive. Some 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 of these things are even consuming the years of love in your your marriage I command right now those fig trees to wither away and die in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth the son of the living God Meluna parani falaska be leva besko beba rotu kai belinska barananto valenska ba rovi kai be iska be menzava le kai be mento per kaiska. The second thing the Holy Ghost instructed me to pray concerning. I'm not really just praying in, but I'm declaring it and prophesying it over you. He said, pray that they will step into Cairo's time. I declare that even 
though the years of your life may have been stolen, may have been taken, may have been consumed, that you are getting ready to step into Kairos, an opportune time that possesses everything that you should have had by now. I see it in the realm of the spirit. I see it. It's like a, a glowing orb, but it's it's and angels are bringing it down. It's like a glowing orb. The spirit of God says it's it's Kairos. It's an opportunity. It's an opportune time. And when and when I look inside of this orb, there were many years things that you shouldn't receive for the next ten years. If you can step into Kairos. You'll see it in two years. You'll see it in six months. You'll see it in three months. You'll see divine acceleration. So I pray for you and I prophesy upon you now and I declare that indeed you are stepping into Kairos. You are stepping into an opportune time. You are stepping into a season of acceleration that the limitations that the enemy placed upon you before should no longer, will no longer and shall no longer hold you down anymore that you are stepping into a season and even as you step into Kairos time you will be discerning discerning you will be able to understand and to perceive the times and the seasons like the sons of Issachar I prophesy upon you and I declare your ears open I prophesy upon you and I declare your eyes open I prophesy upon upon you and I declare that you will step into a connection that you're supposed to. You will not push away your destiny helpers. You will not push away those that God has sent to be a blessing to you. You will not push away your future spouse, your future husband, or your future wife. But I declare you will be able to discern your Kairos moment. Valetoskepe you will not be a hindrance to yourself any longer come on someone declare and say I step into Kairos I step into Kairos it's a harvest time I step into Kairos it's an opportune time I step into Kairos it's the moment I step into Kairos it's the timing of heaven it's God's time Time. It's not limited to seconds. It's not limited. It's not hit. It's not obstructed or limited to minutes, to hours, to days, to months. It's heaven's time. I prophesy one opportunity. I heard the Lord say, he said, prophesy this. Prophesy one opportunity. One opportunity. One opportunity that will cause the years of your life to be restored. One conversation. One opportunity. One conversation. One meeting. I declare you're one in the name of Jesus. Just one. Just one. Just one. I prophesy. Just one phone call. I prophesy. Just one email. I prophesy. Just one conversation. I prophesy. Just one opportunity. I prophesy. Just one moment, I prophesy. Just one, just one. Oh my God, I feel the weight of the prophetic upon that phrase. Just one. Did you know that it takes just one, just one moment for your life to never be the same again? Just one encounter, just one experience for the years to be restored. Just one conversation in the heavenlies can cause the years to be restored. Just one prayer session like this can change your life completely and can bring many, many testimonies. Mantoske, the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers, just one belly, but many rivers. Le Kopele Inska, 
just one, just one. Levantos kedine, roske baike pelina, levantos kada, hebam perenina, rebaike peli. Just one, I see some, I see the Holy Spirit say, he says, just one decision. Some of you are going to make one decision. It's going to be hard for you. You may make one decision, and as a result of that decision, your life will never be the same again for the better. I, I declare restoration of years, restoration of time, restoration, 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 valento Baibe, Menso Baibe, Roske Baibe, Levana Kaibe, Nyanto Pelena Copeliva, Hebambele Vaike, just one, just one. Oh my God, I would do you a disservice if I didn't tell you to sow into that word. I need you to, right now, so everyone that can sow into that word, type just one, just one, just one. Just one men's kabaybe le kobe ishkaba in tebai roske baybe leva. Just one men savai le kaybe rononskebe le kobe li fananske. Just one in farani kobe li zaike belintove men sava. I'm declaring, I'm seeing an individual you've been seeking, you've been desiring funding, funding. Just one individual. One person that you're going to have a conversation with and that door is going to be open for funding. I don't know, I don't even know what it's for, but I just heard the word funding, funding, funding. I pray for you that the one individual, the one conversation that you have to have, let it take place place in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the Bible I heard the Spirit of the Lord. He said, some of you have been going from person to person, from place to place, attempting to attempting to obtain favor. But the Lord says, it, it's just one desk. You've been applying to many jobs, but it's just, just one desk that your resume has to touch. I pray for you, those of you that are believing for a job, those of you that are believing for employment, those of you that are believing for a promotion, I pray for you that your work history I pray for you that your resume would hit just the one table that it needs to touch in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth the Lord is telling me to pray for some ministries some of you ministries it's just one person that will enter into the ministry that will help to change that ministry that one person God can use to bring a hundred that one person it reminds me of the story of, 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 of I believe it was Billy Graham, the evangelist that got him saved. The story goes that he set a crusade and when he called for an altar call, it was just one boy, one little boy that came up to get saved. It seemed unprofitable in the eyes of man, but that one boy was Billy Graham. Just one individual in your ministry. Just one individual in your ministry. Just one individual individual mantos ke du kai felinsa ben peradus ke baike me levantos ke be levante tois ke be oh my god this this a prophetic such a prophetic weight upon this word he's just expanding it elamanto i declare just one check I'm seeing the Lord is telling me you're gonna get one check that is gonna so far outweigh every other check that you've ever received just one donation just one check just one check just one check mentoy Falenskebe. I said receive it I pro you guys know I'm not the type to prophesy all this money stuff but I'm really seeing it and I'm sensing that as a sign of restoration just one check just one donation just one I declare it upon you just one raise just one promotion that will take you where you never felt as if you could be I'm praying for those of you with businesses the Lord says he's gonna send just one person one person who's gonna 
who's going to come and, and appreciate your services and they are going to go and evangelize whatsoever you're doing. Let it be so. Let it be so. Some of you, uh, you have giftings, you have calls, uh, you have an assignment of God upon your life. Uh, you've been waiting for just one, uh, just one mentor, just uh, just one church uh, that you can go to, uh, just one spiritual father, one individual that you can submit to. You've been praying. Uh, you're not rushing, you're not hasty, that's good. Uh, but I pray uh, whosoever is needed uh, to connect to you, uh, whosoever is needed, uh, oh, uh, for you to fulfill fulfill your assignment uh, for you to fulfill the will of God for your life uh, whosoever you need to be connected to uh, I call them forth uh, wherever they are wherever they are wherever they are the Lord is telling me to tell you to let go of the old I see some of you you're still hung up on who you should have married you're still hung up on what your past your old business should have done you're still hung up on where the church used to be you're still hung up on the past you're following these people you're stalking them you you that's all that consumes your mind you can't think about anything else you're filled with regrets you're filled with frustration as a result of this the Lord is telling you to let go let go Job lost a lot but the Lord gave him time seven if you're willing to let go if you're willing to let go yes some of you you have hidden accounts social media accounts where you're using it to, to, to check up on your ex to check up to check up listen it may seem funny but this is literally what I'm seeing in the spirit and how are you supposed to move forward if you're so fixated on the past the Lord is telling me to tell you to let go let go test him in this area let go I said receive the grace to let go I speak right now to every spirit of resentment every spirit of anger as every way you've been grieving lost opportunities uh, you've been grieving past relationships uh, you've been grieving what should have been uh, what passed away uh, any way your mind has been fixated uh, on these things uh, and you've not been able to fully focus on the future I pray for your healing I pray for your healing now in the name of Jesus I speak uh, and I command every demonic memory recall to be broken off of your mind now in the name of Jesus I say let it be broken off of you now in the name of Jesus now in the name of Jesus now in the name of Jesus Lekobe Ishka Vamberadoskebe Yante Kaibene Lakobe Vantoskebaibe I declare over you I say you will not live and dwell in the past you will not live live and dwell in the past you will not live and dwell in the past any longer you will move forward oh yes every spirit of regret that has chained you that has imprisoned you to what should have been to what could have been to what would have been no longer no longer be free yes 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 look at that there's freedom taking place. There's a mental freedom taking place. You see, the thing is, the Lord is telling me that some of you, you felt as if what has happened is the best that could happen to you. You felt as if what has happened, what happened before is the most that you deserve. It's a stronghold in your mind that has caused you to be fixated on the past. You felt as if what has taken place is the most that you deserve and is the best that could ever happen to you. I declare you did not peak in those years, but greater is still ahead. Greater is to come. Greater is yet to come. Greater is yet to come. Greater is yet to come. Melonske Bible, Vante Paranamske Be, greater is yet to come. Ento Velenskaba, Mentove, Piper Rodoskeve, Mensava. Yes, yes, yes. If you haven't sold, 
go and give go and the, the most you can the the the, the, the least, whatever it is that you can do, go and sow into the atmosphere. It's a principle. Amen. It's a principle. I don't want you to miss out on what the Lord is doing in our midst. Go and give into it uh, and type Kairos. I declare your, your step and into that Kairos and that opportune time in the name of Jesus. I want to pray a prayer for healing. And I'm praying that indeed there will be a release of healing. One of the things the devil does is that he causes all types of sickness, diseases, infirmities to cause you to be so fixated on what you're going through or your life to be centered around what you're going through that you can't even move forward in other areas. So you found your entire identity wrapped around your disability. But I'm praying for you. If you're sick, you're afflicted, you're in pain, just stretch out your hand, touch the screen, touch my hand on the screen. I pray for you and I prophesy over you this night. I speak healing to your body. 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 Any way the enemy has caused the years of your life to be consumed as a result of, of, of infertility, as a result of physical affliction, as a result of sickness, I command now healing, I command now restoration, I command the breath of God to touch you from the crown of your head even to the sole of your feet in the name of Jesus. There's a healing. If I prayed for you, if you did what I instructed, check yourself, check your body, let me know what has happened, let me know what you're feeling. If you're here, you receive deliverance, <clears throat> let me know what's happened, let me know what you're feeling, let me know what took place, I declare it over you. Maradoske vayimpelenskebe, healing, deliverance, restoration, 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 restoration. Maleko Oshke Baibe, Valentobe, Viperonoskebe. I declare a redemption of your time. A redemption of your time. A redemption of your time. Someone says, No pain. Amen. If you're testifying, let me know what you were dealing with, how long you were dealing with it for as well. People are, are being healed instantly. Instantly. Instant healings, instant deliverances, instant. Malopene vipe, zoperokoske vipe lento, zobenti kaipe lansa paranoske and shavalanske. Some people feel fire, you may feel fire, you may feel electricity, whatever it is, it's the glory of God touching your body. I speak restoration to your health. Restoration. So it says, I'm spitting up blood. Those are things that were planted by the enemy. Go in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, yes. Dirudina Valanskeva. Ban Shobembe Ravaikebe. Somele Dome Rananske Dinkava. Ento Bele Ishkava. Valento Meranoskeve. Zaibele Kobe. People are testifying, many deliverances, many feelings, many experiences, uh, healings are taking place. Malotoske vaiberonoskebe. Any disability that has attempted to become your identity. I want you to declare, I want you to lay your hand on that infirmity, that affliction, and say, I am not my infirmity. I am not my disability. I am not this sickness. Don't even say mine. Say this. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Healing and restoration. As we pray these prayers, I want to encourage you to be sensitive to the voice of God, to the Spirit of God because I'm telling you there are going to be angels that are stationed in certain locations simply to help you. There are going to be people that are sent simply to help you. There are going to be some things that happen without your input, but there will be some things that happen with your obedience, with you submitting to the Lord, with you being led by the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. 
I declare testimonies. I'm really believing the Lord for testimonies, testimonies on your behalf, testimonies. Where you are today is not where you're going to be tomorrow. Testimonies of promotion, testimonies of increase, testimonies of advancing in life, testimonies. Of those of you that are believing God for citizenships, for green cards, for papers, for settlements, anything that is legal in nature, I declare it work according to your favor and according to your benefits in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus in the name of Jesus some of you are going to wake up and you'll have testimonies I want you to send me those testimonies send them via email send them via text message via Instagram via YouTube whatever sorry via Facebook whatever method you can let me know what the Lord has done for you within this before the end of this month specifically testify let me know what God has done. God bless you. This is your brother, Ugo. We've been here praying. 50 nights is the goal. This is the 38th night, if I'm not mistaken. Glory to God. 11 more to go. 11 more to go. I'm excited. Glory to God. You've come so far. I want to encourage those of you that are on tonight. Listen, we have, we, we've had over 700 people on. I wish you can join all of you. Don't just join the Wednesdays. Join us for the next 11 nights, every night. I, I'm challenging you. Amen. It's a challenge. Come on and pray with us, and you're going to be surprised what the Lord does in your life and on your behalf. God bless you. I love each and every one of you. I pray that you sleep well. I pray that you rest well. I pray for testimonies to be the first thing that you open your eyes to, the love of God, the goodness of God, the mercies of God, the favor of God, that his face would shine upon you. Continue to keep me in your prayers. Keep the ministry in your prayers. And continue to join us in prayer. We're going to be live once again in 23 hours for the 39th night of our 50 days of grown of groans and travails. God bless you. Have a great night. And remember, men are always to pray and never to faint. And if you have a testimony right now, even though I'm going to switch to the music, feel free to still type it in the chat. I'm going to see it. Amen. God bless you. Have a great night.